But now I don't see those gobbles and cubs. I don't hear the blues anymore. Rough Trade is giving away a third off the first three months of the Rough Trade Club plus new music membership exclusively to 101 Part Time Jobs listeners. Become a member of Rough Trade Club New Music and you'll receive the Rough Trade Album of the Month straight to your door every month on exclusive vinyl pressing with exclusive bonus material. Club members have received exclusive pressings of albums from Sufjan Stevens, Sprints, The Last Dinner Party, Julie Byrne and Over Mono, just to name a few, this past year alone. Sign up using the promo code CLUB101POD and you'll get the Rough Trade Album of the Month, English Teacher's excellent debut album, This Could Be Texas, on exclusive Galaxy Gold for a third of the usual price. Here's English teacher on a recent episode of 101. How many opportunities do you get to write a debut album and have and have all of this, you know, sport behind us? I don't know, I really like the idea of holding the bar as being like classic songs. Now you only get one shot at a debut. <laughs> Don't want the album of the month, but still want all the benefits? Sign up to the standard tier using Club 101 Pod, and you'll still get the first month free. You'll also get free shipping on all orders, 10% off the bar and on secondhand vinyl in store, and exclusive access to sold out Rough Trade events. So don't hang around. Go to roughtrade.com slash club and sign up with the code club 101 pod. That's club 101 pod and claim money off the album of the month English teachers, this could be Texas. Today, this offer is available to UK residents only. Do you play in bands? I did for the longest time. And I wish that I knew that DistroKid was a thing. I don't even think it existed back then. DistroKid makes music distribution fun and easy with unlimited uploads and artists keep 100% of your royalties and earnings. A million plus artists rely on DistroKid to get their music on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, TikTok, Tidal, Instagram, and all the major streaming services. When you get DistroKid, you can see a DistroKid bank and withdraw your earnings. You get notified when you've earned royalties and you can withdraw via the app. And you can even check your streaming stats on Spotify Spotify and Apple. Get 30% off your first year on DistroKid by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash 101 pod. 30% off for your first year. That's not bad. We know it's a tough world out there. Why don't you make it easier for yourself? And to get 30% off that free year as an artist where you get 100% of your royalties and earnings, go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash 101 pod. All right, stay with me. I'll be right back after this. The Vietnam War, it's over. Your job just begun. A new HBO original limited series. Welcome to the world of spycraft. Strap in. From executive producers Park Chan-wook and Robert Downey Jr. What are you concealing? Based on the Pulitzer Prize winning novel by Viet Thanh Nguyen. What if I told you that I was a communist spy? How did you become this? The Sympathizer, streaming April 14th on Max. Subscription required. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Sad to hear about the death of Ewan McIntosh today. His work in the office was sublime as Big Keith, Scott Chegg guy, house DJ, foobar wearing Ali G character. Uh, He was episode 12 of 101 Part-Time Jobs. And that happened because... I saw him on the 177 bus to Thamesmead in Peckham and I did a double take and plucked up the courage to go and ask him, are you Keith from the office? I forgot his name in real life. And he said, yes. And I said, I've got this podcast. Do you want to be on it? It's about people working part-time jobs. And he said, yeah, go on in. Classic big Keith style. And we arranged it. I got his number and he came to meet me at Soho Radio where I took him through to the recording studio there. And he gave me an interview for just a totally unknown podcast. He said yes. And I often think about how 
a stranger coming up to him saying, do you want to be on my podcast that you've never heard of before and being up for it? That's good person behavior. You know, that's kind of, and maybe he had nothing going on that week, but he was a character actor and he's done his job, hasn't he? We'll always remember Big Keith. The UK office will forever stand up in British comedy history. So I want to go back to his episode, episode 12. I hope that this brings some good feeling uh, of a couple of his stories from his life before being in the office and around that time and how he was that guy. He was up for coming into town, into Soho, to record for a podcast he'd never heard of before. So here's your Macintosh from 2019. Do. I mean, Did once, you know once it, the office finished, you know, it wasn't going to, it wasn't even going to go on air. It, when you finish filming something, it doesn't go on air for at yeah. least another six months, maybe more. So, yeah, I mean, no, no one knew I'd been in a show called The Office. I just went straight back to work. Like. Did you not find yourself telling your mates, be like, oh, you know, I've just done this job and I think it might be pretty good? Not particularly. I think most of my mates were doing other, doing jobs in other little comedy shows on the BBC at the same time and, and no one thought the office was was going to be any different to any other show really center uh, well no my first job at uni again was terrible was was being a barman but it was being a barman at this horrible nightclub okay uh and it was just oh it was always packed uh, and it was open till like three it was like the hour it was like you get in at 10 and work through to like three or four a.m and uh, it was always absolutely mobbed uh and so i did that for a while and then I got a job uh, for a charity doing, like, phoning. Start, we started off doing stuff for Greenpeace. And then we did this uh, Then we did this job for a charity called Go10 for Africa. Uh, I think that was involved. That was part of Greenpeace as well. Uh, that was ActionAid. That was it, ActionAid. I remember when ActionAid was massive. Yeah. yeah. So they had this idea that their kind of comment relief was they were going to get... Um, phone get schools to do a thing called go 10 for africa where on the 10th of the 10th the 10th of october they would like do 10 different activities at school and get sponsored to do them and actually they thought this is gonna be massive uh <laughs> and we were we were the phone center that was phoning around schools asking if we could send them a pack out and get them signed up and it was all right it wasn't too bad as, as far as call center jobs go yeah i've done a lot of call center jobs i've never done sales i think that would be a bit a bit too much yeah. I, I wrote the forward to a book about worst jobs in the world. Really? Yeah. You're perfect. Uh, yeah, and um, and my one was, uh, I was, uh, and it was a terrible, terrible job, and I didn't last very long at all, and I was a cleaner at a sergeant's mess in the barracks. A sergeant's so mess? My dad was in the army. All right. So we always lived near a barracks. And, uh, yeah, after, like, GCSEs, I think my mum decided I needed to get a part-time job but no it was, I think it was after my A-levels actually so I would have been sort of 17 and uh, yeah I ended up getting this job as a cleaner and a sergeant's mess and I just absolutely hated it and I was terrible at it and that's, a, that's the cafe that's the cafeteria no no it's like the living quarters the toilets the showers the yeah the, the kind of the the area or the TV area like the whole building they live there and they they work there and they live there that's, that's where they go you know when they're not doing their army stuff so it was like, yeah, cleaning toilets, cleaning showers, hoovering, you know, polishing. And I was terrible at it. And uh, I was I was really sort of shy back then. And I didn't really speak to anyone on breaks. And um, yeah, and I, I went in, I, I, after about a week, I went in and uh, I went to my cupboard to get my cleaning stuff out and it wasn't there and I saw someone else with it. And I thought, oh, I guess this isn't, that doesn't look good. And they went, oh yeah, Jane wants to see you and I went through and she was like yeah sorry you're fired or whatever so it was pretty poor my dad was in it sort of as a he wasn't really a, a military person he he was in it because he was a teacher and he got paid better to teach in the army than uh, in civilian life so he always yeah he always said to me my brother he didn't want us to join the army yeah it was never uh, an yeah. option and I hated it because I had to do CCF at school you know where you have to dress up and be, yeah, and yeah. we had to go off for a week in Snowdonia and do all this <laughs> marching around, and it was just a nightmare. <laughs> um, so even from that, I hated it, even with even more of a passion. So there was Ewan McIntosh from April 2019. Thank you, Ewan. Thanks for the laughs. Rest in peace.
Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.